Well, ladies and gentlemen and everyone, welcome. And it's my great pleasure to welcome Associate Professor Dion Forster, who's a radiation oncologist and site director at St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. And he's here to tell us about an innovation uh, in radiation therapy. It's the MR Linac. So welcome, Dion. Um, can you just explain in a nutshell what an MR Linac is and how it differs from the standard radiation therapy machine or, or LINAC as they're called. Yes, Julie. So uh, MR LINAC is a linear accelerator with an MRI scanner combined with it. So MRI scanners have been used for decades now and give us uh, give us uh, soft tissue imaging much better than a CT scan or allow us to see things like the tumour better and to see structures like nerves much better than we can see on a CT scan. So that's what the, that's what the machine is. It's sort of really a testament to fantastic engineering that you can combine these two, but it's taken a long time to happen. But a real change in radiation therapy Fantastic. And I, I want to just get a sense of the benefits, particularly for head and neck cancer patients. But of course, it, I know it's benefiting uh, other uh, uh, diagnoses, other cancer patients as well. But one of the key benefits for patients is what you call exquisite imaging. What do you mean by that? And how does that benefit the patient? Yeah, so Julie, what it allows us to do is to see the tumour clearly, but also to see those normal structures that on a CT scan are less well defined. And so they're structures like the nerves um, and you know, things like the parotid gland, which we can see on a CT scan, but but we can't see them as, as sharply as we can see on an MRI scan. And so they really show us the internal anatomy with, with much more detail than what we see on a CT scan. And so that's the benefit. It allows us to, to see the tumour clearly, but also to see the normal structures. And therefore, we can potentially get more dose into the tumour and less dose to the surrounding normal structures that we want to, to recover fully after this treatment. And, and you can actually see this internal structure in real time while you're delivering the radiation. Well, the, the scan is done immediately before. So the patient is lying on the, on the treatment bed and the scan is done. And then based on that scan, the treatment plan is created. So each day that is done. And so what we can do is adapt to any changes in those, uh, in the shape of the tumour, in the, in the position or the shape of those normal structures. So we call that adaptive radiation therapy. And that is really responding daily to the, to the changes that we know happen, but we can't easily do on a standard linear accelerator. There are ways to do it, but it's certainly not uh, as good as on an MR LINAC. You've had a recent patient uh, where you can illustrate for us the capacity of this combined technology to avoid important structures inside us while attacking the cancer. Can you just tell us about that patient? Yeah, so that was a, a, a rare type of head and neck tumour called an adenoid cystic carcinoma, and it, it had started in the palate, and it tracks up the nerves. That's the typical way this type of tumour behaves, and to the nerves around the, the back of the eye, so the optic nerves, and one in particular. And so here we had tumour right up against that nerve, and what we wanted to be able to see, and, and tumour close to the other nerve, and obviously what what this patient wanted and what we want is to preserve vision whilst treating the tumour. So each day it allowed us to see where those optic nerves were and what dose they were getting as opposed to what dose the tumour was getting. And also we could see the tumour shrinking as treatment went on. And so actually a different, uh, the, the, the shape of the tumour where the high dose was needed was changing. This must be very exciting for you, Dion, as a long-term radiation oncologist. This, the, but the potential benefits for patients here are very significant, aren't they? Yeah, look, I, I do 
um, I don't think it's it's hot to say um, that this is a paradigm shift in radiation therapy. We've really got the treatment techniques where we can shape the radiation very well. That's come a long way. What hadn't changed so much was actually the imaging part where we can visualise daily the the tumour and these normal structures around. And so this is finally a combination of sort of two great advances, the imaging component and the treatment component. And there is a lot still to come. But on MRI, we, we have, it, it doesn't just show us the anatomy. There are things about what's going on inside a tumour and the body that we can see about how much oxygen there is in there. We can see those things on, on an MRI. And so there's, there's huge potential um, in radiation therapy, now the these two pieces of equipment are combined. In a moment, I'll ask you about your hopes for this new technology for patients with pancreatic cancer. Uh, but just before I do that, because I'm a head and neck cancer patient myself and we're doing this for World Head and Neck Cancer Day, I, I just want to highlight some of the challenges this technology has for the head and neck cancer patient. Uh, and people need to understand that uh, for head and neck cancer patients receiving radiation therapy in the average uh, linear accelerator, the average radiation machine, we have to wear a mask. And with this MRI, LINAC, you've got a double problem, haven't you? You've got the tube as well. So just speak to what it means for the patient and what some of the challenges may be and how you're going to address them. Yeah, so Julie, in this machine, the patients need to lie very still because we're dealing with millimetre accuracy for the duration of treatment. And at this point, the treatment time is longer. It's between 30 and 45 minutes as opposed to 10 to 15 minutes on a standard uh, LINAC. And so there is a real challenge there because not only is the patient uh, having to lie still in really what's a bit of a tunnel for that period of time, but they do have the safety mask or a mobilisation mask, which they can breathe and see through, but it does stop them from moving their head at all. So it's, that's a real challenge for patients. We would expect that that time will substantially reduce over time. When I wasn't so grey and old, um, we it used to take about 30 minutes to treat a head and neck cancer patient on a standard LINAC. And so we've seen that come down over time and we will see the same thing happen with MR LINAC. That's fantastic. And uh, we have another video which we'll give a link to that shows the making of the mask and also talks about some of the strategies uh, patients can use with music and uh, uh, mild sedation for some uh, strategies to manage that experience to, to get the benefit of the technology. And, and Julie, uh, you know, I think this is where I want to acknowledge you and your advocacy because that video makes so much difference. Every patient I see that is going to have head and neck cancer treatment with a mask, I make sure that I, they, they get a link to that video. It, it, it is so important, uh, the work you've done in that space. Look, thanks, Dion. And as I understand it too, Genesis Care that, that, that you're working with, they've now got a national policy of new patients having the distress thermometer, which is like a, a psychological quiz or questionnaire that assists clinicians uh, to know whether patients may struggle with things like claustrophobia. So there is there is hope there. But look, just staying with the MR, MR LINAC, um, the future is going to be better, you hope, for people with pancreatic cancer. Can you just explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So the pan we all know that, that uh, pancreatic cancer is a difficult cancer to treat. And unfortunately, as it stands, survival is it, it, it's one of the, it's, it's got poorer survival than a lot of other cancers. Uh, one of the challenges treating it with radiation therapy was actually just to be able to see the pancreas and where you're treating and making sure you weren't doing damage to the surrounding bowel, which is right up against the pancreas. Whereas with the MR, LINAC, we can actually see that bowel and we can see the pancreas. And so we're now treating patients to a very high dose over just a short number of treatments. So typically about five treatments. Um, and the preliminary results are, are really excellent. And the treatment is very well tolerated. The risks of of long-term problems associated with the treatment are low and certainly much lower than they were on a standard LINAC. Oh, that's fantastic. Going forward in the future, uh, your understanding is that artificial intelligence 
will be introduced into the MR LINAC because at the moment a radiation oncologist has to be there every time. So what's the hope for the future there with artificial intelligence? Yeah, so at present, Julie, a radiation oncologist has to be there, has to contour each day. They have to basically draw where that that uh, the tumour is, where they want the dose to be and where the normal structures are, and that's very time-consuming. And that is happening. That's, that's happening while the patient's on the bed. That's the reason the treatment time is so long. And so what we want that to be done much more auto, in a much more automated way, and that will bring treatment time down. And certainly, you know, we know that can be done, but obviously, you know, it, it takes time to get that technology into these systems. But that's where this is headed. I'm very confident that will bring treatment times down and also make it much, much less resource intensive and that actually these units can be um, can can, uh, can uh, therefore be installed around the country in many more centres than the four centres they're currently in. Yes, yeah, so it's only in four centres at the moment. Just quickly, could you list them and tell us whether public patients have access? Yeah, so uh, Genesis Care has uh, has uh, an MR LINAC here at St Vincent Sydney. There is uh, one in Perth uh, that Genesis Care operate, and then one, two in the public uh, system. So one at uh, at the Austin in Melbourne, and one in Townsville. Um, in terms of access uh, for uh, public patients, we have a compassionate access program in Genesis Care for pancreatic cancer patients to uh, enable enable uh, uh, pancreatic cancer patients to access this. Look, uh, Associate Professor Dion Forster, thank you so much for telling us about this amazing development in radiation therapy and the, and the hopes for the future and uh, happy World Head and Neck Cancer Day. I say that because we're, we're building a better future for future patients. Yes, Julie, and uh, to acknowledge your work and uh, and you have made it a better head, World Head and Neck Cancer Day for patients for, for a number of years now, and we want you to keep up the good work. We, we love your work, Julie. Thanks, Dion. Thank you very much. Thank you.